Why are you running to be the leader of the Conservative Party? Well, I love this party. Uh, this party has given me so much. Um, I've had the chance to be Home Secretary, Foreign Secretary, Chairman of the party, be an MP. Some of my best friends are because of the contacts that I've made through this party. And of course, it has been the driving force for so much good in the country and the world. And I worry that if we don't make the right choices at this point, the election result that we saw in July isn't the worst that could come. And I've got the experience from those jobs that I've done. I have got a fantastic team around me. And I want to make sure that we set the party back on the right path, back on a path to government, not for ourselves, but for the country. So that's why I'm running. What do you think we need to do over the coming years to win the next general election? And how will you achieve it? So we've got to recognise there's work to do and you've got to do the right jobs in the right order. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to unite. We've got to demonstrate from Parliament, from the House of Commons, that we are going to unite. That will then allow us to grow, grow the party, add to our membership. And then we've got to win. We've got to win elections uh, between now and the next general election, the first of which, of course, is the county council elections. Got to get a good result in the county council elections, in mayoral elections, district council elections, police and crime commissioner elections. And then we got to win at the general election. And then we have to deliver. And we've got to deliver everywhere that we are in government. So we are once again seen as a party that focuses not on ourselves, but on the British people, and we deliver for them. So we unite, we grow, we win we deliver. Do you have a longer term vision for the party beyond 2029? I think about the, the situation when I was growing up. The UK under a Labour government had seen real economic stagnation. We had the Cold War. We were not a serious player on the international uh, stage. And under the Conservatives, under Margaret Thatcher, we saw us regaining our standing in the world. We saw real economic growth and freedom. We had a home-owning democracy. We had a share-owning democracy. And I asked myself, where is that now? Where, where is that now? Where is the route to home ownership for people on low salaries and for young people? Where is the opportunity to buy a stake in the, in the economic future of this country? You know, where's, where's, where's that mass... Uh, a share ownership offer that we had uh, under Margaret Thatcher and the, and the Conservatives? Where is that c courage on the world stage to set an agenda and pursue an agenda and to do what's right? So we have to get back to some of those core Conservative values. It's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about doing what we know is right and making sure that we stand tall once again on the world stage. And that all starts with our behaviour as Conservatives and a passion to deliver for the British people. What are the top three policy areas you'll prioritise? And what specific actions will you take in those areas? So the first priority of any government is protecting the people. That's why I'll commit to 3% of defence spending. You know, I, I've looked the Russian foreign minister in the eyes. I've looked the Chinese foreign minister in the eyes. I have seen the threats around the world. And I know that we need to spend a minimum of 3% to defend ourselves and our allies. We have got to keep people safe and control our borders. I took action to bring net migration down and I was in the process of taking action to deal with illegal migration. We have got to get that right. It's not about talking about it, it's dealing with it. And then we've got to have freedom. We need to be a, a property-owning democracy, a share-owning democracy. People need to be able to live their lives the way they want to live them, but also have the security of uh, a good income so that they can make genuine choices. So it's defence, it's border security, and it's liberating people to live their best lives. Those are my priorities. How would you describe your leadership style and how will you ensure unity and inclusiveness within the party? I think the first thing that a leader has got to recognise is that no one can do everything by themselves. And in our political system, there's often a lot of focus on the one person. But I build and maintain and motivate teams. And that is why I was successful when I was chairman of the Conservative Party, helping our fantastic team of candidates 
across the country and helping Boris Johnson as Prime Minister get an 80-seat majority. That's why I was a success at the Foreign Office, because I motivated the team, because we've got people scattered all around the world. They all have to pull in the right direction. And when I was Home Secretary, again, I took a department that was dealing with incredibly difficult and dangerous circumstances. And I made sure that we got the uh, Rwanda agreement signed within days of being appointed, that we got the safety of Rwanda bill through the House of Commons, that we made the difficult decisions to uh, change the rules so we cut net migration. I did that all within the first few weeks of getting there because I had a good team around me. And now running for leadership, people that worked with me at City Hall, people that worked with me at CCHQ, people that work with me at the Foreign Office and at the Home Office are now part of my leadership team because I don't leave people behind. So building, motivating and directing a team, that's how I lead. How did you first get involved in politics and the Conservative Party? Well, I don't want to give away my age, but I remember the winter of discontent. Uh, I remember power cuts. I remember bins piling up, rubbish piling up on street corners. And I remember Margaret Thatcher getting a grip of that uh, appalling uh, situation. And whilst I don't pretend that I really understood all the dynamics of politics at that time, even I, as a kid, could see the huge difference between a country that was on its knees before she stepped in and a country that could stand tall once she became prime minister, building alliances around the world, particularly with Ronald Reagan in the United States of America. And that really, really struck me. And uh, I suppose, you know, having a father that started and ran a small business, having a mother from West Africa who understood the importance of family and community. I suppose I was always a natural conservative, but always voted conservative. And I, look, I'm a Tory till I die. What did you do before politics and how has it shaped your views? Well, I had a, a career in business. I was in the publishing industry, initially magazine publishing and then digital publishing online journals. And in parallel to that, I had a career in the reserve forces. And both of those taught me a number of things. They taught me about decisiveness. They, you know, when you're working to deadlines in the publishing industry, you can't be wishy-washy. You have to think quick, act quick, and make sure you equip yourself with the information that you need to make those decisions. The same is true in the military. Again, in the publishing industry, it's a team endeavor, similar in the military. And of course, in both those things, you learn to deal with things when they don't go right. And having that resilience, being knocked down, getting up, going at it again. That's what we need to do as a party. The election result that we had in July this year was brutal, it was painful, and we can choose to do one of two things. We can get knocked down and stay down, or we can get up, get our act together, unite, grow, and win again. What would you say is the highlight of your political career? There have been quite a few. I think working on the uh, Boris Johnson mayoral campaign in 2008, which everyone thought we were going to lose and winning. Or maybe it was the working on the Boris 2012 campaign, which everyone thought we were going to lose and then winning. Uh, maybe it was the 2019 general election campaign where we delivered the biggest majority in decades. Uh, maybe it was getting Brexit done against expectations. There are a lot of, a lot of really, really positive things. But the point is, in politics, in government, in leadership, you can't lean too heavily on the past. You've got to focus on the future. And what I want to do is make sure that in the very near future, we get that wonderful adrenaline rush of winning an election again. That's what motivates me. Not harking back to the things I've achieved in the past, but focusing relentlessly on what we need to achieve in the future. Who is your biggest inspiration? Well, look, I'm, I'm thinking about politics. I'm thinking about elections. Uh, that's very much the focus of my attention. I think every Conservative, of course, will as I have done, um, uh, talk about their memories of Margaret Thatcher. But for me, it was Ronald Reagan, a fantastic communi uh, communicator, fantastic motivator, won that landslide victory in his second term. 
had a positive vision, an upbeat persona. And I think that's what we need to do. We need to put forward our conservative values. We need to put forward conservative policies and conservative plans. But we need to do it with an optimism and an enthusiasm. I want people to want us to win. That's how you get them to vote for you. Not holding their nose, but we're the spring in their step. And that's what we've got to focus on going into the future elections. What do you hope members will learn about you during this campaign that they may not already know? I'm very conscious that a lot of the time over the last what, five, six years, I've been speaking on behalf of the government, speaking on behalf of the party. I have been putting across other people's ideas and other people's visions. And I don't mind that at all. It's part of being a team player. But this is now an opportunity for people to see what I believe in, what motivates me, what first got me involved in politics, what's kept me active in politics and what I seek to do in the years to come. So I want people to listen more about my business background, uh, about my, uh, my family going from the back bedroom of my grandparents' uh, house in Catford to owning their own home, owning their own business, helping me get a start on the property ladder myself. So I think people will find out a bit more about what I think and what I would do. That's what I'm looking forward to through this leadership campaign. What do you hope to show the public during this leadership campaign? We have got to show the British people that we are focused on them, that we're on their side, that we want what's best for them, that we're going to protect them, we're going to help them, but we're not going to try and do everything for them. They need, the British people need to see that the Conservative Party is their best chance of staying safe, but having freedom, having personal growth, uh, having the opportunity to get on the housing ladder. These things that I know we all feel passionate about, but we've just slipped out of the habit of talking about. So we've got to get people to understand that we do this, not for ourselves, not even for the party, but we do it for the country and the people of the country. And if we can do that with credibility, they'll vote for us at the election.